okay, I know, I know. Three parts, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's let's try to make this short. Okay, sweet and to the point. Um, what you're going to find with some of the assigned work and a lot of the algebra that you do um, in the remainder of this course and then beyond high school does involve a lot of reasoning. So it's really, really critical that in mathematics that you do have a solid background in how to reason uh, in a variety of ways. So geometrically, meaning more in a graphical or visual sense, and then also algebraically. So let's see if we can show that these expressions have meaning. Now, our proof, not necessarily the formal style that you might be thinking of in terms of left side, right side, but I'd simply like to have, this is a one-sided conversation here, so it's more of a monologue on why these things have meaning, but you could in both A and B reason numerically. So we could substitute in values, right? Let u be a particular vector. Let v be something, and then perform the operations, okay? Um, two, we could also reason in a different way. Uh, we could reason by definition. So for instance, in, in A, right, in part A, we realize that U, the magnitude of U is a scalar. So that implies when you square a scalar, you get a scalar. So we understand that Vectors can have magnitude, that makes sense. And if we square a scalar, then we get a scalar and that makes sense, okay? Uh, we also know that in part B, we could use a similar line of reasoning to show that it too has meaning. So we know that u dot v is a scalar product. Right, so that's just another way of saying dot product. And if it's a scalar product, it produces a scalar. Thus, u dot v squared has meaning because it too is a scalar. Okay, that is its result. The result is a scalar. Now the third way, okay, third means of doing this would be for you to reason algebraically. So in this case, what we'll do in part A, and we'll just do the one part uh, so that the video is not exceedingly long. So in part A, we could let u, vector u, be denoted in Cartesian form by u1, u2, okay? This would be very similar to us using x and y, okay? But in terms of the, the coordinates or the endpoint of that position vector u, let's just say u1, u2, okay? So with that in mind, what we can do is we could then go ahead and calculate, okay, the dot product of u and itself, okay? Why? Well, we have a, a bit of background on what the magnitude of u squared happens to be, but we're coming at this from a different perspective. So u dot u, using the definition that we have over here, okay, so right here, let's use that to our advantage over here. So u dot u is going to be nothing more than, we'll just write it out in full. So we'd have u1 multiplied by itself plus u2 multiplied by itself. And that gives you u1 squared plus 
u2 squared. Okay, and that has meaning. u1 is a number, square that number, add it on to the square of another number. What do we have? A number. Okay, so a scalar. So that, you know, tells us that it has meaning. It has a definition. Another approach, okay, which you might appreciate at this point in time, is that this should look like something you've seen before. In fact, if we use this to our advantage, okay, what we could do is we could determine the magnitude of u, okay, and then from there find out what the magnitude of u squared is. So by definition, we know that u, okay, or its magnitude for this vector in Cartesian form is going to be the root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. Now to get us where we need to be, that is the square. Square both sides of this relationship. And we then very quickly see that the magnitude of u squared is u1 squared plus u2 squared. Okay, so the expression does have meaning. The interesting thing is that we have just actually proven, okay, something else. We have just shown that u dot u is the magnitude of u squared using Cartesian vectors. Reason being is that the expressions, they both produce equivalent right-hand sides. Okay, that wasn't the goal of this problem, but it just happened to be something that uh, that you can use in your own work. So that's the end of this video. Where are we? Seven minutes. Not bad, I'd say, for at least one of three of the videos. So tomorrow in class, when you come back in, uh, that is after the long weekend, uh, you'll be bombarded with a series of problems. Um, I have a very special one in mind for everybody, along with a few more uh, that will force us to think critically about the properties, uh, the definitions, and uh, the procedures that one follows when working with the dot product.